Today's video is a fairly straightforward one, but one I'm excited for nonetheless. Today I'm showing you how you can go from, for example, on my GoXLR, the pre-processed audio the GoXLR handles, to the raw audio coming straight out of my microphone, to audio being in completely processed through Adobe Audition without needing to record with Adobe Audition or an entirely separate program. This is also super useful if you have a big mixer or DJ audio set that uses ASIO stuff or you typically route it through a DAW digital audio workstation and want it all connected into OBS. This is a video on OBS's ASIO plugin or the plugin for OBS for that because it's not official, but I'm super stoked to share it with you in today's video. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die. They have a spring sale going on right now where you can get a lot of really cool layouts and alerts and overlays and things like that that will really benefit your stream. In fact, I just added their Synthwave chat box style to my stream layout because I was just using a browser source for chat and it ends up looking bad and I hate it every time I stream. No more! Now it looks pretty cool, integrates nicely with my theme, and you can customize the colors, do anything you want, and they even have a cool little script which will set up the entire layout for you so you don't have to manually manage where all the alerts go and things like that. Pretty handy. Uh, go to eposfox.gg slash nerd or die to learn more, save you a little bit of money, and supercharge your live stream today. I'm Eposvox, Vox, your stream professor, and today we're talking about the OBS ASIO plugin. This is a plugin developed by a couple of the major plugin developers, I guess you could say, for OBS Studio that's been around for a while and I've never really looked at it until now because at least last time I looked at it, whenever that may have been, you'd had to compile it yourself and build it yourself into OBS and that was a whole crazy workaround. It can't be included with OBS due to licensing issues since ASIO isn't fully open source and all of that jazz, but they have a you know installer for it now so it's a lot easier to set up at least on Windows they do have the source code available if you want to build it yourself head over to the github link in the video description and scroll down a bit because the pinned release is version 2.0.0 and that's not the latest one for OBS 25 you actually have to scroll down to OBS or to the ASIO plugin 2.0.2 this one works with the latest OBS version download the installer run it install the plugin you'll have to approve a USC prompt and then relaunch OBS Now, you may go into your audio settings like I did and realize nothing changed. That's because your audio devices for the ASIO plugin will need to be managed on a per scene level, which is a bit of a drawback of this workflow, but kind of how it works because the normal audio device setup within OBS Studio relies on devices available to Windows and ASIO devices aren't exposed to Windows. Those are WDM devices. This has been an incredibly frustrating experience when I was originally looking for the perfect mixer or audio interface. And I documented this through the course of my two mixer reviews I posted in 2018 and then my GoXLR review, which is what I'm using now, is that there are a lot of mixers out there, even ones that I say don't use because they only provide a stereo mix to Windows. But if you use a software like Adobe Audition, Reaper, Pro Tools, whatever, and connect to it through ASIO, you get access to 18 channels or whatever craziness is available for the mixer. Well, now this is available in OBS Studio, so a lot of those mixers are suddenly a lot more viable because those ASIO devices are available. So once you have relaunched OBS, you now add a new source and it's at the top under ASIO and you add an ASIO audio source. Give it a name and then you choose your ASIO source a really cool thing about this plugin is that it supports multiple devices. So if you're trying, which a lot of digital audio workstations don't. So if you want to add a mixer from here, a DSP processor or a turntable or something here, and you want to add your GoXLR over here, you can add devices from multiple, you can add audio listings from multiple devices at once and manage them all here in OBS, which makes it extremely powerful, especially for music mixing sets or what have you. So for example, in this, I already have my main GoXLR devices added in my OBS audio settings. I have my desktop sound, I have my Mac microphone, and then I have my broadcast stream mix as a total mix if I don't need to separate out devices. But if I want access to my raw microphone sound, which is bypassing GoXLRs, compression, EQ, things like that, 
because I'm experimenting with adding audio processing later in Adobe Audition just because I want to get better at the process, but I don't want to have to keep enabling and disabling it in the GoXLR settings. I can now add a new ASIO device, choose GoXLR ASIO as my source, and then it lists all the individual devices and you can break it out. For example, my uh, Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK mixer I was using for about a year that I reviewed and highly recommend and still kind of do. I complained that in Windows, everything showed up as stereo pairs. So input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, which meant if you were using them for separate devices, it made it a little awkward to manage because then they were only stereo separated, they weren't separate devices. Here you can choose whether you have a mono or a stereo device. So if you have those paired up inputs, you can choose just one of them to manage the volume and processing and VSTs and all of that separately and then the second one, and then the third one. And so I just chose the listing for the raw, dry, unprocessed microphone sample from the GoXLR, added it in here, and now I have access to both. Something you will want to keep in mind, ASIO latency for audio devices is going to differ a bit from WDM device latency, which is your standard Windows device latency. And most of your audio drivers will have a control panel where you set the buffer size and latency for ASIO devices, and so you can manage that. But keep in mind, you know, the lower latency you go, the more intensive it'll be. And if you're running a game or something super intensive on your computer at the same time as trying to record this, you may experience dropouts or static or whatever. So you'll have to find a nice balance of what works for you. But this is super, super powerful. And I just wanted to show it here for you with my super basic example. I know there's... I, with everyone working from home and doing all of this now, there's been a lot of people who do DJ sets and music streams and things like that who have been asking for support with getting this complex audio hardware that typically runs through its own audio software working in OBS. And I really think this is the missing piece of the puzzle to get that working. And I'm hoping by sharing even just my basic example here where I can separate individual devices out from my Go XLR, I can kind of get the wheels turning in your head of how you might use it for your higher end audio gear. Because to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of experience with what a lot of music producers use on a daily basis. I use, I've used a couple, you know, big boy mixers, but that's about it. But I'm, but they work in similar ways in terms of what ASIO devices are available. And like I said, this also unlocks the doors for a bunch of cheaper mixers, which only provide stereo out over USB, to being a lot more useful in OBS and for streaming due to you being able to access the individual devices again. And I may try to go back and cover some cheaper mixers again. I don't have any more on hand at the moment, unfortunately, but I may go back and try to cover them a little bit more in depth with this plugin in mind, because I think this is the solution a lot of people were looking for when they picked up their mixer and then got mad that it didn't support multiple devices and windows. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe for more stream guides and tech education. Go check out the link in the video description below where you can sign up to learn more about a massive new streaming course I am launching soon, which will have workthroughs of all of this stuff and so, so much more. Link in the video description. Go check out our sponsor for this video as well. Uh, head on over to Floatplane where you can get early access to videos, behind the scenes content, and go follow stream guides on Instagram or Twitter if you want to stay up to date with streaming tips and things like that. I'm Vox. I'll see you next time.